Hey everybody, this is Phil, and this tutorial will cover creating your panoramic curve and mapping your nerve. So first and foremost, we want to map our panoramic curve. So you can see here, we've got our axial slice. We can slide this up or down. If you don't see the yellow orientation uh, bar, you can actually use this little feature here to turn this on and off. And you want to map the arch that you're going to treat and plant. So here we're going to map out for the mandible. We'll select our uh, arch creation tool. There's a couple ways you can do this. I'll show you two separate ways. First, I'm going to just map this down the center of the bone. Double click. You can see in our panoramic curve, we have 150 micron slice. You can change this from a very thin slice to uh, 20 millimeters, basically. You can see your red line, which is my red panoramic view. And this is now 20 millimeters versus 150 microns, a very, very thin slice. And now that we've mapped our panoramic curve, we can go ahead and map our nerve. And I want to map the nerve at its thinnest point. So the nerve becomes much more prominent. If I mapped it at 20 millimeters, well, I can see it and the height might be correct, but when I mark it, it's not going to be accurate from a buccal lingual perspective. So I do want to change it to a thinner slice and then I can begin to map the nerve. So in this case, I'm going to move my cross-sectional, again, my blue, cross-sectional view. You can see here my two arrows moves my cross-sectional view around the arch. If you look in the upper left-hand view, you can see my perpendicular cut moving it around the arch. When I move my arrow or my mouse over my four arrows, you can see this changes the angle of that cross-sectional view. Same thing at the top. It does the same exact thing. Two arrows moves around the arch. Four arrows changes the angle. So I can move my cross-sectional view. And if I'm looking in the lower right, this is my blue view, everything's color-coded. Until I see my mental foramen, which I can see here. Now I can make sure that my mouse wheel is on slide. If it's on zoom and I move my mouse wheel, it's going to zoom in and out. If I'm on slide, and move my mouse wheel, it's going to slice through or slide through. So on slide, select my nerve mapping tool. I can begin here in my cross-sectional view and do a single click, do another single click and let go, bring my mouse up here, and now you can see where I've begun to map the nerve. Now using my mouse wheel, I'm scrolling out to the buckle, you can see my foramen. And now scrolling, scrolling until I get to my next spot of the nerve. And I'm just doing a single click. And I'm scrolling and clicking, scrolling and clicking. And then double click the last one. And you're done. So that's one way to do it. The other way is if I delete my nerve, let's also delete my panoramic curve. And Instead of going down the center of the bone, let's map the panoramic curve where the nerve generally travels. So we'll start off here towards the lingual, and you can even see the nerve here. Click, and I'm just going up towards the buckle where the nerve travels and around the arch, like so. I'm following that general path. Now, in my panoramic curve, you can see the nerve is much more prominent in one single view. So that's also another uh, way to do it, which can be easier, but personal preference. The other thing too is when I map my panoramic curve, you can drag these little nodes to the buckle or lingual, and also drag it all the way to the posterior to the edge of the scan. You wanna make sure you're looking at the entire scan and you're not 
shorting yourself, for example, if I look at and map it like this, I'm missing anatomy. So let's stretch this all the way to the edge of the scan. And now I can go ahead and select my nerve mapping tool. I can do the same thing and begin at my foramen. Bring it up and you can see the entire nerve is showing and it can be easier to map. I can do the other side. Same thing. Double click. And you can see on the left hand side, your object toolbar, I can bounce back and forth to my measurements, my implants, nerve canal, and so on. And change the color of one side if I wanted to, to help differentiate. I can use my little eyeball and hide them both or hide one at a time. And then I can also change the diameter, default 2.5 millimeters. I can give myself a little cushion um, and change it to three, three, five, whatever I want. So now when I move my cross-sectional toolbar around the arch, you can see in the lower right, every time I'm on top of one of these little nodes where I've clicked, you get a little dot down below. And if your dot is a little bit off from where the actual nerve is, of course, you can move it if you can see the nerve in that view. And you're good to go.